we're going to watch this video here of the latest downfall from one of these, uh, I don't know what you would call him. I don't even know if he's a conservative. I yeah, know nothing someone, about this guy. This is what I thought about him. Someone says he's obsessed with race and IQ, like the count. So yeah, he's like one of those guys. Who... Wait till you see. <laughs> this video is so fucking good. I, you almost could play the whole thing probably. Yeah. I, I don't know. know. We'll, it's we'll skip around. So his name is Stefan Molyneux. Yeah. Gavin. He's friends with Gavin. He's a white guy. He's got 929,000 followers. He's begging for money now, saying he's flat broke, just like Milo, and he can't do this because they're holding him back. Now, the fact that I'm able to do this and do it easily, I mean, you know, uh, as far as money goes and all that stuff. When's the last time you heard me beg for cash? And we and have I've got barely anybody. Good luck with your 6K subs on you. I mean, these people have almost a, uh, a million followers on YouTube and stuff. Here's a guy sitting with 929,000 followers, and he's begging for money. He's out of money. If we had 900,000 followers, we would have bought an island, and you would never would hear be a from billionaire. us again. I would be a billionaire by now. So I, I can speak for these people. I could tell you that it's bullshit because I have very few followers way less than 929,000 and I make a very nice living okay um let's just say more than you would make if you worked at uh if you worked at um the cheesecake factory full time as a manager <laughs> way fucking more like probably 80 times more so let me show you this video. This is so good, and you don't need to know who this guy is. You're gonna. I didn't know anything about him. I think most people have heard. And from now him I love this guy. Check this out. Begging for cash. I love this. They're falling. Yeah. Should one, we watch one of his other videos? No, no, no. I think this is good because this is what I saw. This is how I was introduced to him. Okay. And I fucking loved it. So look at this opening picture. Here he is, head in hands. This guy. He's probably uh, late 50s. He considers himself a Graham Hancock type of man. Uh, he's sitting in his home here, and uh, he looks rather depressed, and he actually put this out to his people. Shame on anyone who gave him a dime. Watch this. You know, not the, um, it's really not the easiest topic for me, or maybe for most people who, I love this. like me, don't like showing the soft underbelly of their vulnerabilities and fears and concerns. <laughs> I mean, what's the point of praising honesty as a virtue and encouraging it in you guys if I'm not honest and direct with you myself, which I'm So I could tell you from seeing the end of this, this is all like scam salesman talk. This is all like to butter you up. I mean, he's really like taking his time and saying the right things to like get you where you need to be to feel bad for him. Because at the end, I'm going to spoil it. He drops the bombshell. I need money. I'm begging. He begs at the end. He begs. So knowing that, watching him set this up in this way is so ultra sickening. To be uh, fully physically able to get out there and make your own money, to have all of these people sitting there. You know, you could sell anything to these people. And he's going to sit there and just ask for donations I mean, this is so fucking sick. Watch this. You're going to really like this one. Maybe for most people who, like me, don't like showing the soft underbelly of their vulnerabilities and fears and concerns. But I mean, what's the point of praising honesty as a virtue and encouraging Allah. it in you guys if I'm not honest and direct with you myself, which I'm going to be? Because, you know, it's time to lift the lid. I need to tell you what the hell has been going on with this show <laughs> over the last little while, because it's been... I mean, so I'll be straight up with you, man. It's been pretty brutal. It's been brutal. Pretty brutal. <laughs> earlier this year, very early this year. This accent's fake, right? It's got to be. And do you have a wife? Because if how, what kind of wife would allow their husband to do this? I know. How disgusting! Wouldn't you be just sickened with me? Ugh! My views on YouTube crashed like eighty percent very quickly. Right, very quickly. And that's partly a YouTube policy for people who don't violate their 
standards, but they just don't like, right? And then, you know, look, I knew it was going to be tough, right? It's one of the reasons I started doing documentaries last year. Like I did Poland, uh, I did uh, Boring. Uh, a whole series that's still ongoing on California, Ooh. and I was just out a doc on Poland for a while in Hong Kong, where I just did incredible stuff. Uh, we got amazing footage. I was there with the director of Hoaxed. Uh, I mean, I was down in a protest, uh, talking with people. I interviewed the guy who wrote their constitution. Nobody wants a politician. It. Uh, interviewed entrepreneurs sure. and. Was he's really building up how hard he's recipe. been working. So throughout this whole thing, he's going to be building up. Oh, I have been working on these documentaries. I work, 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 work. The people don't want it. Let me tell you what the people want. They're in into this culture war stuff. You know, and all these people who subscribe to guys like him and Jordan Peterson and Baked Alaska and Gavin, they ain't interested. Lauren Southern found this out the hard way when she did Borderlands. They're not really here. They're not interested in anything serious that's happening. They're here for the fight, okay? They want to see a fight with people on Twitter. They want to be involved in this fuck the libs and vice versa stuff. They're not interested in you going to Poland and showing how the people... Boring! You know, so these guys all got this, this surge of subscribers when they all came out because they were fighting the good fight. And then the people get less and less interested. That's why your views are dropping. Nobody, what do you think? We're all just like studious fucking dorks now all of a sudden. <laughs> the whole world just wants to watch, you know, stuff that we would have to, you know, sleep through in class. Documentaries from these old fucks. We don't want docs. We want people to get doxed. <laughs> get it? Now, you know what I always think about people like this and all these YouTubers who are worrying about their numbers going down? Do you think that they all had a giant surge in their audience and then got mortgages or something and oh, now yeah, they can't pay course. them? Of course, of course. They why all, all, all overextend. They all thought it was going to be like this forever. Why would it be? You know, all these people just kind of popped up all at the same time after this election. You know, we got a ton of guys like this that were never getting any action. I mean... Before uh, the whole Trump thing happened, a guy like this, who the fuck would subscribe to a guy like this? A young person watching this old fuck? For what? So all these people are probably going to start having their houses repossessed. So when it first like started that. happening, Joe Rogan showing you Graham Hancock and Jordan Peterson and Dave Rubin. People are getting excited going, wow, look at all these amazing entertainers here. Mm -hmm. And then they subscribe to him. They go, you know what? These guys pretty much suck. Like even Jordan Peterson outside of like somebody good like when he's giving just like a long lecture it's like fucking boring you know what i mean like i don't think people accounted how boring these guys actually are and how repetitive they are and how they kind of have one story that they're retelling over and over and over again and now we're in year three of all this we don't care yeah, and anymore. what people were interested in was the controversy. Yes, the, drama. the controversy the drama yes okay so you gotta see i'm telling you this one's good this one's good, and I think we should play it in full because yeah. it's a slow burn, and you watch this man lie, you watch him deceive, you watch him fall apart and beg. You don't need to know anything about this man or care about him. I just think it's fun. Let's find out. Let's find out. Right out there in a protest against communism when Woo! the protest and myself, we got hit with, well, with tear gas, and that uh, was intense and brutal and visceral and i just put that footage out i hope you will check it out so i knew because you know it's an election year Canada, this year it's election season in america and you know they're not dumb they know who influenced brexit they know who influenced trump and they just went out yeah here's brandon Mueller. remember class it was the worst thing you ever went through why volunteer your free time to it exactly, <laughs> exactly. if you liked class whoo you deserve to be by him you know the real king of the school so uh oh god <laughs> and every professor is fucking nuts man you know if you're a prof <laughs> like this guy is a cheating lying conning professor i learned this from candy man i knew nothing about academics growing up dj academic i knew nothing about uh college professors growing up i learned everything i know about college from one movie and one movie only candy man yep candace man m-a-n-n -N. he was a black guy with a hook remember the bees farewell to the flesh and uh in the movie 
the main girl, I forget her name, the main girl is uh, uh, dating a college professor, looks just like this guy. Oh, yeah. And he was a lying, backstabbing, cheating son of a bitch. I remember my- But he pretends, he acts just like this, and these guys cheat. Yeah. They fuck people over. They're greedy. They- get in little you watch these academic guys even like ram hancock and stuff they get in these little squabbles over like their research and who was first to discover or write an essay on it or you know their detractors these guys fight like little fucking bitches constantly I these are not my adults first day of college being so disappointed seeing all the professors and realizing those were the people who i had to listen to yeah they're really bad <laughs> men and if you want to be a teacher you deserve to make about 50 bucks a year. <laughs> I want teachers stripped of their salaries. <laughs> Here he is. Listen to this. Crush those views, right? And it's a very effective strategy, I'll be honest with you. Like, it's a two-pronged strategy, right? Suppressing people's views. And again, I know it's not the quality of the show because podcast numbers are actually up. So That's a lie right there. So he's talking about YouTube is suppressing his views. He can't make a living is what he's going to say. But then he goes on and says, and I know it's not the quality of the content I'm putting out because my podcast numbers are way up. Oh, you mean the numbers that nobody but you has ever seen? I love this one. This is a good one. <laughs> oh, yeah, I have very little views online, but my podcast numbers, those are huge. Show the numbers then. And by the way, if your podcast numbers are huge, then it shouldn't matter if your video views are down. You know, so they li they they realize... All these liars realize that I got to do this video. I'm flat broke. I got to talk about how I have no views, but then it's going to look like, oh, maybe I don't have any views because I suck. So I do got to come up with a little lie about why I don't suck. And you're going to hear that a lot with this man. I never thought a guy like this, I always thought guys in their late 50s like this who are so civilized, you know, that they wouldn't be such full of uh, shit. But they all are, aren't they? It's They're the worst. It's realization. It's really tough. I always looked up to this guy. Here. It's a two-pronged strategy to suppress people's views, my views. Number one, it's psychological warfare, right? Because then you say, oh, gosh, my views are down. People don't like my show anymore. Oh, and then you start, you lose your energy, you lose your enthusiasm, you lose your charisma, you lose your push. And I was not going to let that happen. I was not going to let that happen. You so did. I have been pushing through that. And I have been positive and engaged and enthusiastic. Okay, then why is this video called My Brutal Year? That's what it's called. <laughs> My Brutal Year. And then you're going to beg for money at the end because you're saying you're flat broke. So it hasn't been good. None of this stuff is true. It's all falling apart. At what it is that I do, because I will not let those numbers erode my commitment to bringing oh. philosophy to the world. So that's number one, is the undermining of your enthusiasm and your motivation. But number two is more dangerous in a way, very central way, which is, so I survive on donations. And a lot of those donations are one time, of course, but a lot of those donations are uh, monthly subscriptions, right? Because yeah, I don't take ads. I don't have a big sponsor. And so I, I rely on, on, on you, the wonderfully kind listeners, to support what it is that I do. Yeah, and you know what? After year three, people don't get the same kick out of donating to the same guy over and over and over again for doing nothing. This is what's happening to Martina. This is what happened to Milo. The same thing. They just think people are going to want to keep giving you money. It's like, yeah, after the first five times they give you money and you shouted them out, the, the, the thrill is gone. Now you have to actually provide a service or some content to make the money. So people cycle into the show, right? New people see what it is that I do. They get interested and then they end up. You're going to love this. Like six months later, they'll end up starting to donate. But then people cycle out, right? They lose their jobs. Maybe they lose interest. Maybe they've got everything they want for philosophy for a while. Or maybe I say something they don't like. So then they cycle out. So you need new people cycling in for the people who are cycling yes. out. So the whole purpose of suppression of what it is that I do is to choke off the supply of new people coming into the conversation who will support the show. And that puts you in a death spiral as people cycle out of the conversation. Fewer people are cycling into the conversation, which means your income begins to diminish. So my yes. motto for yes. the last year has Income been, diminished. More of the same is a losing game. More of the same is a losing game. Mm. And that has been the case. So 
I, of course, have you been You never the- hear me, minuscule Mike. You never hear me coming on here. My income, my income is diminished. Please help me. Never hear me doing that. Just fiestas, new gimmicks. You know what you do if you have a huge audience and your income is diminishing? You figure out a way to get more income. Exactly. You don't start going, but YouTube, YouTube, it's YouTube's fault. Looking for other ways. Listen to, to this. New listeners, other ways to generate income. So went on a speaking tour last summer uh, and, you know, they're signing books and chatting with people. So you sell some books too, some, some merch. So I was um, doing this speaking tour. My God, man. I mean, it was straight up war out there. Ooh, straight up. So this is like a lie. Now he's trying to do so. What you got to pay attention to is he's trying to pump up his content. So he is throughout this. He's going to start telling little fibbers about how all the stuff that he does is really amazing. Kind of trying to get you to plug it so you do have something to give your money to. I think we could skip through this little spiel a little bit. Just to speed things up because this does get very this does get very uh, funny here. And I don't want to uh, bury you down in the boring parts. Here we go. You know, bomb threats, crazy hostile media saying the most appalling false things. <laughs> and the police wouldn't even show up when the, the, there was a church that was going to host my speech. Where, where, where? People throw up, show up to, to, to threaten them. People and throw and up. They call 911. They're scared. The police don't even show up. This is how freaking crazy it is. <laughs> out here. So that You're a geek. is cut off. New listenership, new viewership is largely cut off. So what can it's I do? Well, I can go out and do documentaries because nobody knows where I'm going to land. I can go out. I can do my thing. You would thing. think he's been banned from all social media. I mean, Gavin McInnes was actually thrown off all social media. He found a way. He got back and he's working and he uh, got a bunch of subscribers and he's making money. This guy is up there. He's literally nothing happened to him. His views are down. That's it. So, uh, you know, you're listening to this thinking, oh, he must have been deplatformed everywhere. No, nothing has happened to him. I think I can come back, assemble the footage, and, and put the documentary out. So that's one possibility. But, you know, it's one of the reasons I've had the conversation, so to be frank, right? I put this documentary trailer out for Hong Kong. It's crazy, great, powerful stuff. I guess not. Um, by the way, thanks for those who thought I've gained weight. It, it's not. I was just crazy Shut the fuck up! in Hong Kong because... My digestion did not survive the trip. and then the, the, the Ooh, time this is con. Just, anyway. This is con talk. But, yeah, I'm asking for donations for that stuff and getting very little. Yes. So does that mean you guys don't want me to do documentaries? Yes. Okay. What should I do? <gasps> I'm, if it's not going to be documentaries, again, more of the same. It's a death spiral. It's a losing game. The show is not going to survive because suppression means fewer people cycling in. I can't go... And do book tours. I can't go do speaking tours. I can't go do speeches. So what am I, what am I to do to get new listeners to survive? To have I don't know. Teach. Maybe use that huge brain of yours to figure it out. Ever thought of that? <laughs> what am I to do? Imagine if I came to you. What What do you want me to do? You don't like my last project. What should I do? What should I do? I don't know. Maybe get out the game. Maybe get a job at. Uh, Where's that great place where I thought Danny should work? Trader Joe's. <laughs> You'd be perfect. Torn, you ever thought about becoming gay? Torn work at Trader Joe's. This guy's always bragging about how he has a super high IQ. He's like one of those type guys. Yeah. So maybe use your IQ points. Exactly. Why are we listening to a man who does not know what to do <laughs> to make money in the easiest? I said this on the last show. I was dying laughing. I heard it back. I go, you can't make money on the internet? The easiest marketplace in the world to make money on? I mean, this is so easy to make also, money on the fucking none internet. none of our YouTube videos have been demonetized. None. Oh, that's something good to tell. One of my YouTube videos was demonetized because it was age-restricted, the true Geordie one. But none of my other YouTube videos are demonetized. They're all green dollar signs ready for ads. And we don't run the ads. But I'm not demonetized at all. So what's going on? And I say some bad stuff. Bill Burr's black wife. I say the word <laughs> that's uh, <laughs> out, bleeped out. <laughs> so uh, why, am, why am I not demonetized? Why are my views through the roof going viral every weekend? <laughs> 
Uh, you got to hear more. This guy really starts begging here, and it's just so funny to watch an old man beg. Go and do book tours. I can't go do speaking tours. I can't go do speeches. Why can't you? So what am I, what am I to do to get new listeners to survive, to have this conversation survive? 650 million views and downloads, more than a million of my books read every year, thousands of listener conversations, incredible ones. you should be fine. Ones. Hundreds of subject matter. You should be fine, then. Expert interviews. What, 10 or 11 books? I mean, it's an incredible thing that we built here. Mm, well, not if you're begging for money, it's not. But how am I going to keep it alive in this incredible headwind of a ridiculously hostile and abusive media? Like wow. New York Times. <laughs> Uh, it's so unfair to the people, too, who are tricked by this. You know, think about all the followers of these shows who are believing Steven Crowder and Martina. I'm being suppressed. You must give me money. I'm being suppressed. I mean, this is really like uh, this is worse than uh, the Righteous Gemstones taking all that cash last night at church. Yeah. Right. Taking all that money from people. Xander says old man podcast beg dot gift. Yes, there it is. And it's another one bites the dust. I love this. What am I to do? Another man down. The bubble is popping. We're seeing it pop, pop, boop, boop, boop. Everywhere you go. It's finally, we're getting that little crash that I've always craved for. You know, where all these guys, they were living the life. And now it's being taken from them. It's out, out west in Canada. We got the Irish Times now. Right? We're just crazy. Hostile. Stupid stuff. Wikipedia has turned into a complete toxic waste of <laughs> leftist prejudice. And oh, that's the editing. problem. Wikipedia is really, oh, that's turned into a dumpster fire over there. Oh, <laughs> Wikipedia. That's the issue. You're blaming Wikipedia. You know, I don't even go to Wikipedia. Why would you go to Wikipedia? If I need to get a definition, I go to the Webster's Dictionary. Okay? <laughs> Not Wikipedia. Making me out to be some kind of monster, and then they lock it down so it can't be changed. I mean, that's... That's hard, man. That's hard. This That's gets so hard. good. Now, you can survive deplatforming if you have, like a crew, if you have people who will support you and help you out. And like Dave Rubin's getting, they're threatening to deplatform him at the moment. He's interviewing Maxime Bernier, head of the People's they're Party of Canada. They're not threatening to deplatform Dave Rubin. And, um, yeah, he was hit with 10 times security costs because of threats. And I'm, I'm like, I'm Listen Twitter and I'm like, hey, man, I'll, I'll help you out with your security costs. I'll chip in because this has got to go forward and so on. And I'm out there pushing back against people who are being deplatformed. But hell's bells, man, when I was being deplatformed, who was standing up for me? You guys, yes. Oh! I mean, who out there who's like prominent and, ah! you know, helpful? So he throws that in. You know, when Dave Rubin was under attack, I, you know, was helping him. Do you need any money? And then when it happened to me, no one was there. Well, you guys were, of course, all the people that I'm begging for. Huh? Jesus. This is a con man. This is an arrestable offense, in my opinion. I would like to cuff him. Does Sheriff Pat Melton know about this guy? Imagine Sheriff Pat Melton taking him back into that Pulp Fiction room and putting the ball gag in his mouth and giving him an old time. Are we able to get him on our payroll? Yes, easily. Uh, so listen to this. This gets great. It's just, it's just the way things are. So my strategy is I've been doing documentaries. My other strategy is I've been really working hard on Twitter. You know, we did, uh, in one month, did 100 million impressions on Twitter. Okay. Meaningless. Hopefully going to get, translate into, into new, it's not. Uh, new stuff. Uh, and uh, so I've been pursuing a variety of strategies, tried a new call-in show, just a dial-in show with a phone number for enjoying that. So I'm really, I really am trying new stuff to keep the show going, to keep the show alive. You know, it's hard, too, because after 15 years, this is something John Cleese no. said years ago. Listen to this. You get about 15 years of peak creativity, and then things, you know, ugh, you know, it's like a, uh, a ten. Oh, really? Because I'm in year 18. Also, why would we give you money if your peak creative years are over? Yeah, well, he's got a million different excuses here, and hopefully you throw enough on, and you could, uh, you know, there's five different groups of people that buy five different things. Okay, there you go. You could confuse them. You could get the money. I wonder how much money he's made. But wait till you see the ending coming up here. I have 15 years of peak creativity and then things, you know. Ugh, you yes, know, your like cold a, a product. Just exactly. Keep folding in. You can keep poking it up. <laughs> right. So at the sort of 15 year mark of me doing this as a public philosopher, there's a lot of suppression. There's a lot of undermining. Nope. There's a lot of uh, verbal abuse and attacks from the mainstream media. 
and uh, income is down because fewer people are cycling in to support what it is that I do. Expenses are up because I'm doing these documentaries, which are very expensive, and it just feels like it's a bit of a vice, man. It's just a bit of a vice yes! that's closing in ah! on what it is that we're doing here. Okay. And I know, I know it's essential. I Keep know it's scratching. <laughs> but I don't know how it's sustainable. Oh. And that's the challenge. And that's the challenge. So, I mean, I guess I'm, I'm telling you where the pain points are. Not something I enjoy, but again, I want to be honest. I'm telling you where the pain the points pain are. The pain point. And I'm asking for your help. <gasps> I mean, tell me, tell me what, is, what is this I should be doing? What should I be doing? Help me uh, brainstorm uh, about things that I... No, no, you're supposed to be a philosopher. Just tell... So he's breaking down in the video. Just tell me what you want. I'll do anything. I don't know. I'll get naked. Show me your dick. <laughs> Open up, sir. I will give you money to get naked. <laughs> Show me your butt. Show me your butt and your dick. I'll give you the money. I'll float you for a year. Naked handstand now. I could be doing. You know, it's hard to go on other people's show. My name's become really, really toxic. No. Uh, and there's not a lot of new people I want to interview. And I'll still keep doing the listener calls. I enjoy those. But, you know, again, more of the same is a losing game. The show cannot survive more of the same. I need new things. Do you not want me to do documentaries? Do you want me to write another book? Uh, what topic do you want? This what is the guy who played, by the way, if you don't know, this is the actor who played Freddy Krueger. <laughs> oh, really? In the movies, yes. He just said he'll write a book he'll on do... whatever topic <laughs> you... we want. He said that? Yeah, I'll back. write a book on whatever topic go back a you want come on i'll do anything i'll write a book on whatever topic you want go back you got to hear that this is insane I still keep doing the listener calls i enjoy those but you know again more of the same is a losing game the show cannot survive more of the same i need new things do you not want me to do documentaries th do you want me to write another book uh, what topic do you want what what <laughs> what do you think will help wow what it is that i do <laughs> <laughs> are you guys sharing what it is that i do because without your shares, I mean, again, can't survive. And will you have? Without and your shares, I get zero shares. And I'm surviving fine. Nobody has without ever shares, shared a Red Bar video. It's up to you. I get like one share a month from Andred Aknid, the, the Indian time, listener of ours. The only time a Red Bar video is shared is when it's two friends in a basement and one guy nervously yes. shows the video to a guy beside him for five seconds while sweating and worrying. Yes, this is literally the only <laughs> guy, because you see, you get updates. Abhirajit Anapalagagan. He is an Indian man of specific descent. Here he is. This is the only guy who's ever shared my stuff this year on Facebook. I love that least. guy. I saw a pop-up. Ambrajaj Alabakatin shared your stuff. I go, incredible. It's got no likes. Nobody's seeing it. Your shares are house of I. Can you help? Can you help? Please. You know? I mean, the strategy is effective, right? Income is down. Costs are up. Not a very sustainable business model. But you've got to take risks when you're under attack. Because You're again, more of the same is a losing game. More of the same means the show fails. Show dies. See, and again, they all do that thing where they almost convince themselves mid video that it's worse. Like we were watching that with Lady A, where she's like, Am I a shadow band? There's nine people here. Cut to halfway in. Guys, I am shadow band. I am under full attack. So we do need your help. You watch all these guys within their video convince themselves further and further that things are worse and worse. It started out with, so I need a little help. And now it's, please, I'm begging you. <laughs> I am under attack. <laughs> it's like you could see the lie in real time. So I need new things to do. And I, I need your support. I need your help, my friends. I really, really do. I have been busting my ass this year like you would believe. Trying to find ways to extend and expand the reach of the show. Then you're useless. And it's been hard. It's been frustrating. It's been disappointing. And, you know, I, I like to act, and, and yet it feels like I'm trying to push string to, to, to just be able to achieve something. <laughs> so I, I need your help. I mean, again, it comes down, costs are up. Please. Look. I, I want your suggestions. Absolutely. I want your feedback about what it is I should do, but I do need your help. I need your help. Um, it's expensive. 
<laughs> cutting these documentaries. And then don't do them. Uh, maybe it was a mistake. Yes, I don't it think was. so. Yes, I don't it think was. So I think that they'd be doing pretty well. And then they're no, they're not because of it. But you know, maybe you disagree or whatever. But yes, we do. Nonetheless, you're broke. Even if it was a mistake, I really Josh. need your help. Um, please, please help me cover these costs. I mean, <laughs> I'm, I'm on my knees here. Please. Uh, we need your help. Please help me. I love it. That's like you only see that in a movie. I'm asking you. I need your help. Please help. Please. Please help. I I'm begging. I mean, come on. You can't actually do that. That's from a film. Even in a movie, it's usually a guy just asking his dad or something. Yeah. Not publicly not the begging. World. <laughs> Here, look at this scene again. This is great. Because of it. But, you know, maybe you disagree or whatever. But nonetheless, even if it was a mistake, I really need your help. Um, please, please help me cover these costs. I mean... I'm, I'm on my knees here. Please get please on help. your knees, Philosophy, bro. Please help. What it is that I'm doing. We He's are going facing crazier. really the greatest threat to the survival of the show that the show has ever seen. Free demand. I also spent a lot of money on the new website, which I think was important. The old website was not working very well, and there was no place for me to post. Sell that ideas, couch. Sell that painting. The new website, free domain. The new, the whole. I mean, it's pretty expensive to buy that domain name as well. But again, I, I'm very happy with those decisions. <laughs> the domain but I need to, name. And, 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 I can't do anything other than, you know, stare you eye to eye, tell you what I need, and, and ask for your support. Please, please help out <laughs> what it is that I do in these incredibly difficult and what? dangerous times. No, no, no. So please help out what it is that I do. Um, you can he check out hurt. the Hong Kong documentary trailer. Shut the fuck up. If I hear the word documentary again, I'm going to make one. But I, I need your help. I need your support. And... It's been a while since I've asked, and I've. The fact that I don't like asking is not particularly. I relevant. mean, even Beige Frequency asks for less help than this, and he's making documentaries just fine. He just goes, Thank you to my patrons who support me. I'm going to continue making these films. That's it! Shut the fuck up! But I am going to ask nonetheless. Please, please go to freedomain.com forward slash donate and help me out. <laughs> help me out. Give me your suggestions. Give me your I'd feedback. rather help Rhonda. This is a collective <laughs> endeavor bringing this level and intensity of philosophy to the world in these desperate times. These desperate and dangerous times. No, no, no. I really, really need your help. Free Domain Radio. Sorry. <laughs> Free Domain. Uh -huh. Everything's fine, isn't it? Forward slash donate. Thank you. Sell your art. Thank you for this art. incredible ride. I really, really hope it continues. I look forward to your feedback. Love you guys. Ooh. How long? I always like, how long do I hold it? Is it off? Is it off? Thank you for your support. Is it off? Did you stop the tea? Oh, man. Wow. What a nice one, huh? Another one bites the dust. We're watching them fly. Here at Red Bar, we are a non-political show. Uh, we will cover any downfall. And we will cheerlead it and celebrate all of them. I love when a man is out. A fucking currency. <laughs> now He's in got the no chat, money. people keep sending me this other old video of him that they say is really good. That's him reacting to a dollar donation, I guess. Him reacting to a dollar donation. They say okay, let's we see have this. to play it. Okay. Let's